So first, we will turn the work you've already done, the problem or need statement, and the research project plan into a formal chapter one for the paper due at the end of the course. The rubric for chapter one provides excellent guidance for the expectations for writing and formatting this chapter. This presentation is meant to build on the information from the rubric. So stop this presentation, go visit the rubric for the chapter one assignment first. Start off the chapter with an overall introduction to the setting and your role in that setting. Set the stage for the reader. So if you are in XYZ school and you are the guidance counselor, start off with XYZ school located at blah, blah, blah with X number of students and a little bit about the diversity of the student population. The researcher is the guidance counselor, one of three guidance counselors in XYZ school, blah, blah. That's just an example. All right, after the introductory section, transition into your problem statement, which the problem or need your research will meet. So right here, you're gonna pop in that problem need statement we already did to make some re any revisions that I mentioned when it was graded. Next, to discuss in general terms how you will conduct your research. In other words, pop in the research project plan. See how we're building on what we've done? Next, discuss the significance of your research. This was also probably in the research project plan. And discuss any limitations of your research. That was probably in your research project plan, but if you didn't do that or it needs to be built on further, limitations include things such as this has been being done in XYZ school, which is in an urban environment. It may not apply to rural settings or XYZ school has um, a very homogeneous population. It may not apply in settings with more diversity in the student population, etc. Those are examples of limitations of your research. If you have questions, about limitations, contact me. Chapter one ends with a list of vocabulary words your reader will need to know to understand the rest of your paper. Any term your reader who is not in your specific field will need to, to know to fully understand what you're writing goes in this list. And this list will evolve throughout the course as you continue to work on your paper. So go back and add more terms as needed. This list should be in alphabetical order and the rubric has suggestions for formatting this. Now, all of that writing chapter one shouldn't take too long because we have a lot of the pieces already written. So the next step 